This video is a relatively short follow-up to my previous video on the Heathkit IM105 volt ohm milliammeter. Uh, this is about the Weston model 660 multimeter which is the uh, the source instrument for the IM105. In other words, while Heathkit produced the IM105 kit, it was essentially a clone of the Weston 660. And this is the closest clone or closest cloning that I've observed personally in my experience with uh, Heathkit test equipment. I found some others that were inspired by commercial equipment and in some cases possibly reverse engineered from uh, equipment by other brands although I think most were original Heathkit designs but in this instance the two are essentially the same exact meter so I'm pretty confident in saying that with the model 660 Heathkit just obtained a set of parts from Weston and kitized them. Uh, anyway, so this is a sheet I found online that lists the entire 66 series or 6600 series. The low end model is the 660, and that's the one that Heathkit uh, turned into the IM105. And then they have three intermediate models, the 661, 662, and 663. Their top-of-the-line model is the 666. And um, that is the one that apparently Heathkit turned into the IM-104, which they introduced about a year after they introduced the IM-105. And then later on, they reintroduced the 666 as, uh, well, they reintroduced it. Uh, they had taken it away from their product lineup and then brought it back. Um, the 666, even though it uses the same case as all the other ones in the series, it's a solid state meter. Um, you can see from the specifications here that the sensitivity is um, 20 kilo ohms for DC and 5k for AC across the board until you get to the 666 when it suddenly jumps up dramatically to 10 mega ohms on DC and 10 mega ohms on AC uh, that type of high impedance or high sensitivity is only obtainable through solid state um, amplification inside the meter. Uh, so even though it doesn't mention that it's solid state here, one can conclude that it is. And indeed I've found um, a schematic online for the uh, IM104 which does show that it has four transistors and an op amp inside of it and uses additional batteries. Uh, anyway, so this isn't about that, this is about the model 660. So I've already done a thorough coverage on the IM105 and this video will now continue with just a brief exploration of the 660. And I should mention that even though this meter's manufacturer is commonly just called Weston, and that's what it would say on their logo, the actual name of the company was the Weston Electrical Instrument Corporation, which actually dated from the 1800s, the late 1800s. Uh, but as far as I've been able to tell, that's remain the name of the company up until the time they eventually went out of business. Although they, I don't think they went entirely out of business, they were absorbed 
into other brands which still exist in one form or another. All right, this Weston 660 meter here, I've been working on this in fits and starts, and I've kind of lost track of my narration thread. Um, but I wanted to see how similar or different it was from the Heathkit IM105, which is based on it. And uh, the results of that is that um, this circuit board, which is the main range selection circuit board, is virtually identical. There's really no substantial difference between it. Looks like pretty much all the same parts are on there, allowing for different suppliers on different production runs and so on. Uh, the Heath kit did not have these plastic tubes over these two large resistors, nor did the instructions call for it. So that's apparently something Weston did. I th suspect that's just there as an insulator um, because these are pretty big resistors and you know if something failed on these they're also handling high voltage um, apparently Heathkit thought that their normal insulation was adequate and Weston wanted to do a little bit more um, otherwise there's no real difference on this circuit board except comparing it to two different Heathkit IM105s all the foils on these boards go the same places but they're subtly different. For example, there's this round pad here with no hole, and um, there's no you know no hole drilled there, like I said. But on the Heathkit version, this pad doesn't exist. The foil just goes straight through, and also the foils are slightly different widths. And like this meandering one, yeah, there's an extra pad here that's not on the Heathkit, but it takes a very slightly different route in its curvy progression and things like that. It's like somebody sat down and laid out original artwork copying the Weston artwork but leaving out things that weren't needed on the Heathkit version and making just very slight deviations in things. Um, there would be, you know, for example, this big pad here would be more freehand uh, than it looks here just in this, this oval here would look a bit more like two holes with a bit of a foil between it. Just little differences. And then there's also um, like this little jumper here. <clears throat> That's not on the Heathkit version. This back of the fuse holder goes to the jumper which goes across here to here and then from here to here all there is is this post which is on both versions and then it goes to the left end of this blue resistor in the middle of the screen you can kinda see um, the way it gets there um, well the post doesn't go to the resistor I'm sorry but the fuse holder goes to this pin and then through this jumper goes down to uh, let's see, this pad by the tip of my thumbnail on the, this pin on the switch. On the Heathkit version, there's just a, uh, a more direct route from here to here to the switch without having that jumper and that extra um, lopsided pad there. So they obviously said, well, that's not being used. Let's leave that off. Um... I'm not really sure why some of these round pads, there's quite a few of them scattered around. I'm wondering if they might be test points, like some automated tester that might come down and touch those points. Uh, that's the only real likelihood I could think of. Uh, but I suppose it's also possible that this board might be reused on the... Um, another model in the series because there's like four or five variations on this basic meter and Heathkit made two of them, the IM-104 and the IM-105 uh, and then they made a, a different version of the 104 later on that was like, I forget the number already but um, they discontinued it then reintroduced it while the IM-105 which was the same as the Weston 660 
was made for a longer period of time and was not interrupted in the middle, nor was it reintroduced. So, um, let's see what else. Oh, this, this shunt, this heavy wire shunt, took a slightly simpler path, like it was um, on the Heathkit one. It's a little, little bit more squared off, but still doing the same thing. Now on this board, things are a little more different. For example, um, yeah, this capacitor here is road is located going this way over in this position, although it still goes to the same place. Just the circuit board arrangement has it oriented to use up this free space over here rather than be in this tighter location that Weston has it. And uh, let's see, this little capacitor here, which I think is a 0 .0, uh, 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor, that's actually right across the, the final meter circuit, uh, the part of it that uh, includes the thermistor, and the DC trim pot, these parts here are all either in series or in parallel with each other between the polarity selection switch and the two pads that go directly to the meter movement. So Weston had this extra capacitor here and Heathkit apparently decided it wasn't doing enough of, uh, didn't have enough of an advantage in the circuit to be included and they used a different type of thermistor. And when I say type, I don't mean it was built differently. It just looks like it's by a different brand. Um, and finally, I think the other major difference is that this potentiometer here does not exist on the Heathkit version. This is a fairly high impedance uh, potentiometer, and it is wired directly across the meter movement. So it's like a shunt across the meter movement and um, so the majority of current going through the meter movement will go through the meter movement with a tiny little bit bleeding around through this trim pot. And I think that's because uh, it allows a little fundamental trimming of the circuit to get the meter itself responding exactly where it should be which then would helpfully make the whole rest of the calibration circuitry work that much better. Um, it almost looks like a kludge the way it's put on there, like maybe they didn't have it originally in the design then just decided, oh, let's, let's put a high-value pot across that and just stick it up in that part of the board. Don't know. This is the only one of these I have, and I couldn't find any documentation on it. Anyway... Um, stick it back together and see if all the repairs I've made actually work now. Alright, let's flip this guy over. So this board goes in component side towards the front of the meter. And I also need to make sure that this slide switch uh, has its little insulator here in the right position, otherwise it gets caught up on there and causes problems. About like that, I think. Oh yeah, I also have to make sure the uh, the switch is rotated to match the keying on the switch shaft, and it's not. This one has its key pointing to the right, and that means I need to have... this guy here... like that. Now here's another small difference. On Weston, the battery connector here is actually soldered to the circuit board, where on the Heathkit version the battery connector is just clipped on and then has a wire running to the circuit board. Not sure why they changed that, but 
that. And then um, <clears throat> springy wires. I hate those things. There. I'm not sure what order these things should be dressed in. But um, right now I'm just going to... There, after some messing around, they're in there in some shape. Um, <clears throat> now the next thing to do would be to put in the uh, two screws if I can find them in this pile of junk these two screws they go down in there but they don't go in yet this is where they're actually trying to make connection but um, the screws actually go through from the other circuit board and I believe it's just these little shoulders right here that actually rest on the circuit board and make connection. Oh, I forgot a step. I've got these two guys here, the two posts with the hex drive. Those need to be stuck down. Nope, I was wrong. They come in from the front. So I'm good with that. Put this stuff back where it goes. Alright, this circuit board is in place. And it looks like the switch made it through its little uh, dust cover there. And now this board needs to go down this way. Again, component side towards the front. And it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins will engage with those three and those two and those two. I don't think anything else has to go in between here. I think that's good. So we just um, try to get everything to line up. And then I think just push down and it kind of snaps in. The circuit board sitting on the back of the meter housing, so I think that's all correct. And now the circuit board actually gets held in by the two screws that also make the electrical connection to the meter. I didn't too lazy to get the nut driver out to do this. Come on. Kludgy way of doing it. Okay. Now we can't see it very well, but you can kind of see where the screw comes down where its shoulder is resting on the pad on the back circuit board there as well. So that should be all the assembly from this side. And now we take these two guys and drop them. Oops, that's not right. And the ends of these posts engage with uh, the two screws that, um, or the two screwed posts, or threaded posts rather, that secure that um, heavy wire shunt. So those posts that have the shunt soldered or welded to them also engage with these two and 
if we look at how those are used, one of them is the common, and the other one is for the 10 amp AC or a 10 amp DC um, current input. So, in the situation where we're going to use that shunt on the 10 amp range, uh, we've got this nice heavy lug going directly to where the shunt is. Now the uh, fuse holder with its fuse also has a hex drive and it goes into here but um, I think it's best to put it on after the face plate is mounted. So let's see here. I think everything's in position. This turns freely, that's good. Now this thing is held in by friction, um, mostly from this hole here. It's precisely made to engage this uh, shoulder around here. It also comes very close to the edges, but I think the main point of friction that holds it on is just right here. So we drop this on like this, and then we need to... Um, <clears throat> push it on with something and I've been using the hex driver there it's on took two hands I have to push both sides at once so now I can put the fuse holder in from the front Now the thing I haven't done here, and this is kind of stupid of me, the calibration has to come in from the front. So I actually need to take this panel off again so I can recalibrate it. So I've marked the holes for the AC low cal, AC high cal, DC cal, which actually is accessed through this switch, but you can't easily see the potentiometer down in there. Oh, there it is. You can just make out the slot. And then behind this hole, way down in there, is that additional pot, which I said I thought was just for better accuracy, but I think um, it also serves the purpose of being a calibration for the amps mode. Um, that might be the easiest way to, to set it up, actually, because otherwise um, the ohms is calibrated with this, DC volts is calibrated with this, AC is calibrated with these two, but there's nothing to calibrate the, the DC milliamps range except for that pot. So if I can put in a an accurate, I believe the meter is 50 microamps, if I can put an accurate 50 microamps through this meter, probably by putting another meter in series with it and fiddling with a power supply and a resistor, um, then um, I can get that calibrated and then uh, go and start setting up the rest of it. Okay, um, <clears throat> I've got my uh, digital multimeter set up here to read milliamps and I'm currently getting 0 0.05 milliamps near the end of its resolution. I'm achieving that with a 5 volt DC power supply through a 100K approximately value resistor and then in series with both meters. And it's coming pretty close. Um, I'm on the 50 microamp range where no circuitry in here is involved except the immediate components by the uh, meter movement itself. Now if I can reach in here with this thing if it finds anything to adjust. Let's see, it seems to be hitting something. Oh, I thought I found something there. Well, I can influence it downrange, but and it's possible that this meter doesn't have the resolution to accurately give me 
uh, what I'm trying to get here. So I may try using this guy. I believe this has a lower milliamps range. Yeah, this guy's reading a bit lower. It has more resolution. So I can try changing my power supply a little bit to take it up to um, 5.1. Five point two. So which is closer? They're equally distant, but I can go to an extra layer of fineness. There, <laughs> five hundred micro or fifty microamps or point zero five milliamps, and now I can turn this pot and I go slightly over or I can go a bit lower I can bring it right up to the top and I'd say that's about as good as I can do to calibrate that one pot well um, I forgot that the DC Cal pot is also part of the equation I can't easily bypass that so what I did is I set this to the middle of its range and then readjusted the uh, the first trim pot uh, with a, a 10 volt verified signal to get a 10 volt reading. Hopefully that'll make a little more sense. I didn't have to change it much. Hard to tell that it's not the Heathkit IM105 except for saying Weston on it. I actually don't know where it says model 660 anywhere on here. It, oh, there it does. It says it on the on the meter movement itself rather than on the front panel. Um, <clears throat> I did manage to repair this. Uh, it is working, uh, but it is a little flaky in some of the contacts still. I could not completely recover from that. And the trim pots in particular are amazingly cheap trim pots for a quality meter. They should have put something better on there and since I'm not going to use this, I decided to leave the original trim pots in it and not replace them with modern ones, which probably would have given me better results during calibration. It was just a little bit touchy where you'd get it calibrated and then you'd change a range and come back and it would be a little bit out again. And I just got tired of chasing my tail around and around with that and left it where it's good enough for demonstration purposes, but um, not as good a calibration as it should have had or would have had when new. Anyway, I wasn't that interested in Weston meters in general except to see how they compared with the Heathkit versions of them.